Now, let's have a look at some advanced customization features of this 3D connection with Second Life Space Navigator. Keep in mind this is not exhaustive, but will hopefully be a useful guide for your further experimentation. Now, let's go to the Edit menu and in the Preferences. And remember where we were? Input and Camera tab and right here to get the joystick set up. Now, I do hope, since it looks so intimidating, that there would be an easier preset menu in the future. A simplified user interface would go a long way towards making this easier. But in case you're ever confused, right here for the Space Navigator is the default button, and you can click that to always reset to the defaults. You'll notice some numbers changed here because I was experimenting with changing the scale. But before we look at that, let's consider the top. There are the X, Y, and Z axis, or Z axis, <laughs> if, you, if you look here, because it's a 3D device, right? You can push parallel, like I showed you before. You can twist, or you can flatten, or, or, or pull it, push or pull it. And these are useful. They're already pre-mapped, but some joysticks and things like that won't have all these axes, and you want to selectively map them. This is where a 3D cursor comes in since it functions more like a three-dimensional cursor than a joystick. That's why it's checked. If it's unchecked, then it wouldn't move the same. And I haven't found unchecking it to be of much alternative use yet, but I haven't experimented thoroughly with this. So let's just leave that on. Now, something like auto level. What does that do? What that does is if you're in joystick fly cam, it'll even things out. Let's compare. I'm going to close this here, or just move this off to the side. Oh, just some dust on my table, pardon. And I'm going to turn auto level off. And now on the Space Navigator, I'm going to go into fly cam mode. And you'll notice when I am going to handle this, I'm going to move upward, okay. And then I'm going to, for example, twist, twist around. And see, the horizon is crooked, and it stays crooked. However, if auto level is on, it will smooth itself out like that. And you just saw that. So I can show you that again. And notice now, if I try to make it crooked in any sort of other way, it will level itself out nicely. So that would help you if you're getting kind of dizzy. Next up, we have these control modes. And by the way, direct zoom, what happens it means that the values from this joystick or other input device are mapped directly to your field of vision instead of being treated as a delta. If you're sure, not sure what that means, you can click on and off to experiment. And again, with that word experiment, it's very useful to turn things, to change things one at a time and see what difference it makes. If you change too many at a time, it will be very confusing, likely. Another thing of interest before we get into these scales is the feathering. Set, setting feathering further to the left means smoother, gradual drift motion, okay? So if I put them all to the right, and then I were to go into the fly cam mode again, it's going to stop suddenly when I release my hand off. See? Stop. Whoop! Oh, I just, sorry, I, I pushed the button. Stop. Stop. Whereas, if I open the joystick configuration again, and I set feathering all the way to the left, and you'll notice the defaults are close to that, now, it's going to be more gradual. See, it's going to drift some, which is better for movie, a lot of movie kinds of shots, unless you want a sudden abrupt motion to jolt everything to a halt. Looking back here, scaling. This affects how little motions can make either a big change or not. The build ones in particular are set lower than other ones because they call for more precision, right, when you're uh, manipulating objects directly. We can compare this by looking at a cube again, and in this mode I can just, you know, raise it, and you see I just touch a little and it's going up and down nice and slow. If I were to change this point 0.3 to something extreme, and to change all these values, in fact, let's just go ahead and copy this over, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, just very extreme there, and now if I have a tiny motion, whoa, it's going gonna, it's gonna to move it a lot quicker and more hyper because it's scaled, so the values will be greater, and I've lost track of it. Oh, good riddance. But that's what it does. 
These dead zones control where in the Space Navigator it's sort of uh, like in the middle of a range of values where moving it would make no difference, hence the dead zone. And it's pretty small here because it's already been pre-customized. These are all kind of really jiggly. I know I would be, when my, when my previous experiences with a joystick, it would remain kind of level. And I think this needs to be made more useful, more intuitive, because right now I'm not really getting a great sense of whether I'm moving something or not. It's because it's so hard to read. I think that's certainly one thing we could do to improve the usability. If I was moving it and it tells me, you are moving this axis, or let me easier map an axis if I you know, tap an axis and then it says, which one do you want to map this to? So that would be something for future consideration. We're in the prototype years. <laughs> You'll notice the zoom mapping. If you want to turn any axis off, you set it to minus one. And zoom mapping currently is off, but that correlates with zoom scale, which can be used in conjunction with the joystick fly cam. Let's have a look at, let's see what else is there. Well, <laughs> in tinkering with these controls, I discovered something pretty funny. You'll notice that this is all set to minus one because all these axes are disabled except for the zoom mapping. Now I set that to one and I set the zoom scale to 0 0.01 and the zoom dead zone to 0 0.01. This isn't of much use, but I just wanted to show you. You may remember in a previous video tutorial, I emphasized the use of view, zoom in and zoom out. And I know with another joystick, I was able to use the fly cam to the, the, the earlier version of these controls to zoom in and out smoothly. Well, it so turns out that with these settings, and I haven't figured out how to optimize them with the SACE Navigator yet, but with zoom mapped this way and scaled and so on and so forth, what happens when I go into fly cam mode is sort of a trip into the Star Trek zone. Oh, isn't that cool? That could be a pretty cool special effect. Anyway, not of much use, but in my next video tutorial, I do have some general and specific Space Navigator with Second Life tips you want to check out. So come on and watch.